Hello, hello. Okay, I can see that you're joining. <laughs> so I will give you a second before we start. <clears throat> Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my chat box is open, so if you have any questions, actually I will be asking you some questions. So feel free to uh, to answer. <laughs> if you have any questions, yeah, go ahead. I will try to uh, uh, to look at that, and I will try to answer your questions as as you have them. Uh, okay, hello from Poland. My name is Magda Kania. And uh, I'm very happy to see you all from different places around the world. Fantastic. Okay, so the session is <clears throat> today, the session um, will be about uh, teaching teenagers um, and uh, the golden rules of effective teaching. I hope you, uh, you will um, get some interesting. Uh, information and some uh, practical ideas uh, from me today. So let me start uh, actually with a question. So what do you think? What are the uh, rules of effective teaching? Okay, if you have any ideas, suggestions, please write them in the chat box. Yes, if I, I, I'm sure you have. <clears throat> what are the rules of effective teaching? If you could name one or two, listening to others. Okay. Mm -hmm. Make students interested, being consistent. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Motivation. Okay. Whose motivation? Our motivation or our students' motivation? Giving opportunity to speak, considering students' interests, needs. Fantastic. Okay. Project work. Uh, teacher students collaboration. Super. Mm -hmm. Any other? <laughs> Adjust my thoughts. Okay, great, brilliant. <clears throat> okay, so you mentioned quite a lot of uh, aspects of teaching and all your ideas, of course, are uh, valuable and significant, but well, I, will, uh, I will try to convince you today that actually there is only one rule <laughs> of effective uh, teaching, and that is being a good teacher basically. So I'm not sure if you if you agree with me, hopefully by the end of the session, uh, you will. <clears throat> so the rule of the, the, the golden rule of effective teaching is being a good teacher. But well, are we good teachers or aren't we? How can we, um, how can we check whether the person is uh, a good teacher or not? And the main question here is like, what do good teachers have in common? And uh, do you have any ideas about that? If, if, uh, if somebody asks you to, uh, passion, okay. <clears throat> they love their job, mm -hmm. okay. Empathy, creativity, sense of humor, engagement, love, they love a the job, yes. <clears throat> well, it's, is loving the job really <laughs> the aspect here? Well educated, being open minded, inspire students. Okay, wonderful. Uh -huh. Patience, being a reflective teacher. Thank you, Tamari. I hope you watched my session on being a reflective teacher. <clears throat> Professional development. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, yeah, quite a lot of aspects, as you can see. So uh, let me tell you about, um, about a book by Daniel Willingham, Why Don't Students Like School? A remarkable read. I, I absolutely recommend it. Uh, and in this book, he mentions um, a situation uh, which happens uh, in American universities uh, every time the college professors um, end the course. So they, of course, they are being evaluated by their students. And what the students um, have to do, uh, they have to uh, answer 30 questions, 
well, maybe not, not questions. They get um, 30 sentences which they have, with which they have to agree or disagree. Okay, for example, the professor was respectful of student opinions. The professor was an effective discussion leader and so on and so on. Okay, and so 30 items, uh, quite a lot of uh, thinking, uh, analyzing and assessing for students. But what happens then, the researchers, <coughs> sorry, I need a sip of water. Researchers have examined these sur surveys and um, they uh, evaluate the, the, the professors, okay? So they, they check the ratings, they see which professors are, um, um, assessed as the best and so on. But um, there was one more thing that the researchers uh, discovered. Actually, that uh, these 30 statements come down to two aspects, connection and cognition. Uh, so instead of uh, creating a 30 item uh, survey, what the universities uh, could have done um, is asking the students two questions, basically. Does the professor teacher, in our case, seem like a nice person? Here we have the connection aspect. And the second question would be, is the class well organized? So as you can see, <laughs> that's all you need to be to be, uh, that's all you need to, um, to be able to do uh, for, for other people to say uh, that you are a good teacher, actually. Uh, but I absolutely agree with him because, you know, effective teachers, they have both of these qualities, yes? We, well, we, I'm saying we because I assume, uh, I, I think I am a good teacher. Uh, we are able to connect personally uh, with our students. And what I mean here is the, um, the emotional bond between students and teachers and that accounts for whether students learn. I'm not when 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 I say that the the, the students have to um, answer the question: Does the teacher seem like a nice person? Uh, it's not the aspect of you know being a, a funny teacher, somebody who who tells jokes or oh I like her, she's a nice person because she doesn't give us homework. No, no, that's not uh, this the, this way of thinking. Okay, I'm talking about creating emotional bond, about uh, building um, rapport with our students. So we we are able to connect personally with them, and the cognition aspect is the fact that we can organize the material in a way that makes it interesting and easy to understand. So as you can see, <clears throat> some sort of an actor, yeah, you know, but some teachers have this ability. Yes, they, mm, they are good actors, but um, some, some teachers are not, and they still are good teachers. So uh, today I will share uh, some practical ideas, of course, with you. Uh, and um, I will use the Gold Experience course book uh, and I will show you how I work with this one, because actually this is the one I, I use um, um, currently uh, with, with my uh, teenage groups. <clears throat> so I will share some, uh, some ideas here. And first, the first part of the session will be um, around the con connection aspect. Remember about this um, emotional bond we create with our students. And the second part uh, will be about cognition, about uh, the ability to organize our lessons in a coherent way, to make sure that our students um, have a chance to, uh, to really learn something, they have enough time to practice uh, something, and um, the, the, the lessons, the, the, the teaching is in a way impactful. Okay, so let's start with uh, connection. And what, what do I do uh, to, to make sure that my students like me, <laughs> they think that I'm a, a good teacher, a nice person, and that I really care about them, that I respect them. So I will share some, uh, some ideas um, with you now. Uh, the first one is uh, something I called a course book, a book full of gold, okay? Um, 
<clears throat> Why do you use the picture of, a, of women in gold in your presentation? Um, because I like the picture. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm talking about the good teacher and I'm presenting uh, the gold experience course book. Okay, so it was something like that. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a bit complicated, but this, this is the way I, I think and I prepare my presentations. Um, but I'm glad it attracted your attention. Uh, okay, so a course book uh, full of gold. You see, um, when I have, when I, uh, when I um, buy, uh, sorry, uh, when I uh, buy a new book, uh, I'm not sure if you have the, the, if you do the same, but the first thing I do, I smell it. Yes, I just flip through the pages and I smell. I love the smell of a new book. Uh, and the second thing I do is just read the last page. That's that's what I do. Yes, that's how I how I start reading. Yes, I start from the end. Uh, but I notice that what my students do when we start working with a new course book and I give them the books, for example, in in the classroom. They uh, they do the same. First, they smell the book, uh, but then yeah, I, I don't know why. What's 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 about it? But I, I simply love it. <clears throat> I love books, so maybe that's why. Uh, but the second thing my students do, they just flip through the book and they uh, look at the pictures, look at the titles, uh, look at the texts. Uh, and it's hard for them to focus on what I want them to do at, uh, at the given moment, yes, because, you know, there is something new and they want to uh, discover it. So I thought I can uh, tap into that, um, doing something, uh, something in a different way. And uh, at some point, I, um, I saw this post. Uh, it is uh, the idea mm, from, uh, from one of the librarians <clears throat> who decided to, uh, to prepare the books, like wrap the books in paper, um, because he didn't want people to pay attention to the cover, okay? And don't judge the book by the cover, uh, you know the saying. Uh, so uh, he wrapped the books um, in, in paper and just um, put, uh, put a piece of paper with the first sentence from the book. And he asked people uh, to, <clears throat> to choose the book by reading the first uh, sentence. And I thought, okay, this is a great idea, something I can do with my students uh, before I give them uh, the new book. So I think this is something you can use, you know, in the coming days, yes, anytime, uh, probably next week on, or in, in two weeks time. So what do we need uh, to do this? Well, if you have the paper course book, that's brilliant, but you don't need it actually, because on Pearson English portal, I hope you will have the account on this uh, portal, uh, you have access to all the materials, all the course books that you work from the, with. Okay, so in, in my case, it's Gold Experience B1, the, the, the book I, uh, I showed you. Uh, and here, when you click uh, in your dashboard, you can see the course book. When you click on the course book on uh, Gold Experience B1, you can see in presentation tool part, you can see the units. Okay, so uh, in each unit, once you click on the unit, you can see all the lessons from the unit. So what I do, I just go through the units and I just go through the reading sections. And I simply, by clicking teach, I open the page <clears throat> from which you can um, copy simply the first sentence of the text. So that's what I do. I go through um, through the book. <clears throat> I choose some uh, some of the sentences from the texts. And in this case, because it's, this was the online lesson, I used the Jamboard. Okay, so this is one of the tools. If you have the Gmail account, you have access to uh, Jamboard. <clears throat> Uh, it's very easy to use and it's free. Uh, so I once I created the Jamboard, I just added uh, the sentences uh, here. And this is how I started my lesson. I told my students, guys, so uh, we, are, we, we are going to work with a new course book. It's absolutely fantastic and fascinating. But before I show you, I want you to, uh, to get a, a small taste of it, okay? So here are the first sentences uh, of different texts, from different texts. So have a look at them and let's 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 work on uh, on that uh, at first so first i ask my students to simply read the sentences 
and uh, they can you can ask them to predict the topic to predict the main points or predict the vocabulary it's a good um, opportunity for us to check what our students remember uh, on different topics yes like what kind of vocabulary uh, is stored <clears throat> in, uh, in their memories so <clears throat> This is something that absolutely uh, worked. Uh, it worked brilliantly with my students. But <clears throat> then I asked them um, to work in groups. Yes, like I asked them to gather as many ideas as possible. OK, so do not limit to one answer. I, um, this is something I, my students know, uh, know um, that I always do. I am never satisfied with one answer. Okay, can tell me more, give me more, think more. This is something they constantly hear uh, from me. And <clears throat> um, when, um, as soon as they are ready uh, and, and they spend some time on thinking and, you know, analyzing and, you know, predicting uh, the, the, the topics, I ask them to, to find the text and just com compare their ideas uh, with uh, what they expected, okay? So the surprise is guaranteed uh, because like you see, uh, I grew up in Wales uh, this is a lesson I will show you later in one of the uh, exercises. The ideas were just crazy. <laughs> it was about, you know, um, the ghosts, about, uh, you know, grandparents and stuff like that. And actually, the lesson is about endangered languages. So students were really surprised and a lot of laughter. Uh, later on. Uh, I think this is a very good way to start uh, start the year uh, because um, you show your students like what's in store. Okay, see, this is going to be a fantastic journey, uh, but also we gather um, information about what our students already know and what they remember. So uh, I absolutely recommend this one, uh, Finding Gold definitely uh, will work for you uh, as it uh, worked for my students. Okay, another idea uh, is, is I called golden revision. Yes, you know, I always start my lessons uh, with uh, revision, uh, which at first, well, my students have to get used to it. Yes, they don't like it. They, you know, every time I, I start the lesson with a revision. So I, from the very first minute of the lesson, I expect them to be active, to do something. Mm. That's not not very nice for them. They 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 need time. They want some time to, you know, to start thinking. Uh, so well, that that's that's how I work. I think it's um, it's necessary uh, for them uh, to be ready for what we do later. Yes, like we have to revise um, the previous material, the previous lessons, so that they could be ready for for what is uh, to come. So I start with the blast. That's what I uh, that's what I call it. What do we need for this activity? Once again, access to Pearson English portal, and uh, in the presentation tool, once you present um, the page from the course book, um, you can choose the why whiteboard option so the students cannot see uh, the course book they can only see the whiteboard and the toolbar that you can see on uh, on the left <clears throat> there are some options here especially the widgets section uh, and for this activity all you need is the timer okay so this is the uh, the timer you can um uh, you can use when you work when you work online. You can share your screen. If you work um, face to face, you can use the uh, overhead projector and just use the whiteboard, the interactive whiteboard, and your students can see uh, the timer. So, um, well, we of course we have to set the time by clicking plus or minus. Uh, and when you are ready, you just click uh, timer and it starts. Uh, so this is the one thing that you need for this activity. And the, the next one is a set of around 10 questions or statements um, for your students, okay? So uh, you have to remember that these questions have to be um, precise, short, and to the point. I make sure that the questions or instructions for my students can be answered with one word, okay? Like for example, preposition that collocates with depend. Of course, my students simply write on, okay? So I prepare a set of 
uh, questions for my students. And uh, what is uh, what is uh, worth remembering is that it's a I think it's a good idea to add uh, a question which is kind of surprising or funny. Like, for example, did you do your homework? <laughs> Can you imagine asking different questions? And suddenly one of the questions is, did you do your homework? The student heads go up and like, mm, are you kidding? Like, what are you asking us? Is it a trick, tricky question? Uh, so this is what I, uh, what I, uh, what I, what I use. Uh, Dorot Talshevska, question three needs two words, right? Yeah, of course, like, I mean, like one word or two words, okay? <laughs> uh, what, I, uh, what I mean here is like, I don't, um, I don't expect them to, to write the whole sentences, okay? Yeah, <laughs> uh, because uh, what I need, um, well, what my students need is just a piece of paper. And before I start reading uh, the questions, I ask them to write numbers from one to 10 because I want to save time later. Okay, so that I want them to be really focused on the questions, on the instructions. So I have the questions, I have the timer, and I ask my students to write the numbers from one to 10. And once everything is ready, I simply start reading the questions and my students um, write the answers, okay? It's a very quick activity, uh, but what I, what I suggest here for you to remember is uh, when, once you have the questions written, once you're ready, uh, try uh, reading them to yourself to check whether one minute is enough, because sometimes maybe you should, uh, you should set the timer for two minutes, probably, okay? You don't want to stress the students uh, here. What is the point of this activity? I want um, this because this is a, a kind of a revision, a kind of a test, but it's it's actually it's not the um, it's not assessment. Yes, I I use it for my students to um, to check whether they remember what I want them to remember. Okay, I want to see um, if there is anything I need to work on. It's like kind of a warm up, yes, but it's also like a preparation for what's what's going to happen next. Yes, I want to, um, to um, I want to make sure that they are ready and I want them to see that they are ready. Yes, because once they do um, the, the golden minute activity, then we go through the answers and they can see like, wow, with, with uh, what they didn't remember or what was uh, the problem uh, for them. Okay, so it's a good way to, to, uh, to start a lesson uh, with, uh, but remember, try to, to make it kind of stress-free <laughs> and by adding like a funny, a surprising questions, uh, or one or two questions, you make it more fun and your students don't feel that they are being in a way kind of evaluated, okay? Or graded or something like that. So um, the idea the, the, this, yeah, it's a quick, very quick check, exactly. Um, the, the idea for this activity is from the blog by Christina, Kabal, I think, Sabal, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, I absolutely love her ideas. And this is the, the blog which I visit uh, quite often and I, I recommend it. Yes, yeah, just christinakabal.com. Okay, so uh, one more thing um, here, finding gold in unexpected places. You can see the person who asked me about the lady in gold. I hope you can see now that gold is everywhere today. So uh, finding gold in unexpected places. Um, I'm. Um, how about checking the answers? Okay, so, uh, uh, okay, I thought I said it, but okay. So once, this, once we, I go through the questions and my students write the answers, um, we of course we we check um, the time and see who was um, who was the first one yeah who needs maybe more time uh, but we go through the answers together okay so it's like one more minute but they check the answers themselves you can ask them to exchange the papers with their neighbor yeah so at, at that uh, in this situation you are definitely sure that the neighbor will find the mistakes if there are any uh, but like i said it's um it's educational it is not a, a form of assessment okay it is for them to retrieve the knowledge uh, and if they didn't remember to recall uh, what i want them to to remember for later if they remembered perfectly okay they will remember simply better uh, okay <clears throat> so let's get back to this activity finding gold in unexpected places attention to detail 
you see, when you work, well, we all work with fantastic course books. And nowadays, the course books are kind of loaded with stuff, yes, especially Pearson course books. Um, and if you go uh, to Pearson English portal, you can see that you have absolutely everything there. So sometimes there are so many things, so many options, so many resources uh, that maybe, well, I sometimes have this, this, this feeling like, oh my goodness, I wasted something. I wasted um, so many opportunities uh, to, to, to do something, yes, because there is too much of that. Um, but what I love about this one, about gold experience, is um, the fun footers, which you will find uh, at the bottom of each uh, part of the unit, like re reading section, listening section, uh, grammar, and so on. And you will find them at the bottom, like here, for example, this is the text I told you about. I grew up in Wales, remember? This is a text about endangered languages. And uh, here we have the fun footer. Uh, the fun footers in the course book, they, mm, they have uh, you will find different different uh, different things here. You will find jokes. You will find uh, fun facts or some quotes sometimes. Okay, so this is something we can exploit with our students, uh, uh, and we can um, work on it during our lesson. We can use it to start our lesson in an interesting way, or we can use it to end our lesson in a surprising way. Uh, there are many options. You can also kind of leave them for your students to discover. But from my experience, I noticed that if I uh, hope my students will uh, discover something, you know, by themselves, they won't. So what I do, I uh, attract their attention to the fun footers uh, as they are really uh, brilliant. And here, for example, was a lesson about endangered languages. And uh, in the fun footer, we could find, uh, we can find information that there are no specific words that mean yes or no in the Irish language. I think it's brilliant. It's a brilliant piece of knowledge. Like nobody needs that, <laughs> but sometimes it's great to know uh, stuff like that. But I, I, um, I, I thought, hmm, will my students really remember this? Uh, I wasn't so sure. So I decided to, uh, to, to end the lesson in a different way using the information from the fan footer. And I ended the lesson with a can't say yes or no game. I think probably you probably know this game. This is the game in which you need a set of yes, no questions. Um, and you simply ask the questions uh, to the other person and the, um, the other, the second, the, the person answering the question questions is not allowed to you to answer with yes or no. Okay, so they have to, uh, they have to answer in a different way. It seems easy. But it's not, trust me, they, uh, my, my students always fail it <laughs> at some point. Uh, and um, this is because, you, you know, I quite often, I, uh, I, when I created the, the first set of questions, I added uh, some extra words like, are you good at sports? <laughs> they created something. I'm not very good at, at sports, blah, blah, blah. And I asked, really? And this is the moment when they just say yes or no. <laughs> So it's a tricky one, um, uh, but in terms of um, language learning, this is a fantastic activity because you know when you when you are not allowed to answer automatically, you have to be really focused and you have to think about different ways. Um, uh, to answer the question uh, properly, of course, uh, some of my students. <clears throat> you know, smarty pants decided, okay, so I will answer the questions with maybe, yes? Like, are you good? Uh, do you know any famous people? Maybe. Are you good at sports? Maybe. <laughs> but you know, it's the kind of spoilers. So, uh, so I added <laughs> the maybe into the game next time we played it, okay? So you can't say yes, no, or maybe. And you have to remember that your answer has to be yes, no, but you are not allowed to use these words. Okay, so it was a lot of thinking, a lot of fun. Uh, and, you know, for me, uh, uh, an opportunity to discover how creative uh, my students uh, can be. Uh, so, well, about this game, 
you can find quite a lot of sets of questions, of yes, no questions uh, on the website uh, eslprintables.com. You can, of course, buy the game because actually it is a real game. But what I think is better is if we prepare it ourselves. And what is even better is when we make our students do it. So what I do, I ask, uh, I prepare a set of words uh, my students say, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is the, the, um, the most typical answer. Uh, I don't know. Or uh, what is this? It's mean. It's mean. Do you know? Do you have the same mistake in your, uh, in your classes? <laughs> I don't know. Or it's mean. <laughs> yeah, it just takes a lot of time to get rid of that. Uh, okay, so let's get back to, to the task. Make your students do it. So I, um, once my students know the activity and they know what, I'm, uh, what, what I expect uh, from them, I prepare a set of words that I want um, my students to revise or to practice. And I ask my students to write yes, no questions using the words that I want them to practice. Okay, so we kind of kill two birds with one stone here because they revise vocabulary, they practice some structures uh, and they prepare the activity that later on they do uh, with their uh, partners, okay? So we don't have to spend a lot of time thinking of the questions and, uh, and uh, uh, creating them and you know writing them down. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm agree. Okay, and the, the, the typical, definitely typical mistake. Yeah, I'm agree. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to uh, to golden ideas, uh, crazy positive. I, I, I don't know. Maybe some of you uh, know know me know me better. Like I mean, like it's not the first session. It's not the first my first session that uh, that you attend. So if you do, you know that I'm a very crazy positive person. Yes, I like laughing. I like um, making fun uh, of of people, of myself especially. And I have a lot of crazy uh, ideas, and I try to share it with my students. Uh, and I uh, let them be creative and uh, let them be crazy um, because this is what, what I like. Yes, this is what I think uh, is great uh, for, for being, um, being named a good teacher. Yes, like just if I like it, why, 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 why don't my students, why shouldn't my students be, be like that? OK, so I always say um, I always tell my students wild guesses are absolutely the best okay so tell me whatever you want um well firstly you speak english secondly I, I i can't be offended i like crazy ideas um and this is um this is the situation in which we uh, make them use uh, their imagination but also their knowledge yes let them share it yes they have wonderful and brilliant ideas once we let them okay if we expect only good answers correct answers and like one answer for every question that's just no you know the end of education the end of learning and uh, that's why i <clears throat> Uh, I always encourage my students to to be open and to uh, uh, to share with me whatever comes to their uh, minds. OK, uh, I can see something in the chat. How can a teacher find that psychological connection with teenager? Because this age group needs more friend like teachers than usual instruct instructors. Mm, you see, um, it's hard for me to agree with you. Uh, I won't tell you how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not a spring chicken. Uh, but, you know, I, somehow I have a great connection with my teenage students. I think it's about, you know, being open and being willing to, uh, to listen uh, to them. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm also good at giving instructions. Yes, I, I'm not sure um, what you mean that they need more friend-like teachers than usual instructors. Like, uh, I wouldn't divide the teachers into these two groups. Yes, like friend, like can a go, uh, an instructor can't it be a friend like teacher? I think you can be. Yes, I'm. I, I hope I'm the proof of it. <laughs> More like equals. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. You know, I would have to think about it. Uh, Alienia, is it Alienia? Okay. 
Alina, I don't know how to how to uh, pronounce your name. Um, if you could get in touch with me, Aliona, okay. If you could get in touch with me after the session, I think we could uh, we could talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I have to think. <laughs> okay, so uh, like like I said, wild guesses are the best because uh, you know in, in when we let them share their ideas, uh, even the craziest, uh, we show them respect. Yes, we don't judge them. Sometimes, of course, their ideas are silly and you know. Uh, like difficult to 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 accept for us but i don't know you just have to practice and be open to that yes we can also always respond uh to to anything which is inappropriate of course i would do that if the the, the ideas are inappropriate i would not uh, just smile yes and there would be some kind of reaction uh from me uh okay so here i will i, I want to show you um um, how I do this um, with uh, another lesson from Gold Experience. Uh, there is a fantastic lesson about sports, um, but you know, the unusual sports, okay? Not typical activities like volleyball, football, and so on. But there is um, uh, a text with eight different uh, sports which are not so popular, like, for example, bossa ball, kibasen, uh, <clears throat> uh, bed racing, uh, jolly ball. Okay, Magdalena, in my opinion, just treat teenagers the same way you would like to be treated by your teacher. Respect is the key. Thank you. Brilliant answer. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, if I don't like being laughed at, you know, publicly, I never do this to my to my students. Yeah, definitely. Okay, getting back to sports with a difference. Um, so what I do. Uh, no, what I do here, I uh, I start with uh, kind of the predicting activity. Yes, okay. So I ask my students, what do you think? Uh, what are the sports? Maybe you know something, okay? If they don't know, uh, of course they will use some of the knowledge and they will try to um, to kind of decode the word like boss, sabol, boss ball okay they had different ideas here like you know the game between bosses of the big companies and and so on it's like jolly ball is like jolly it was like they, they they said okay i i i I remember the word like for he's a jolly good fellow and they started singing suddenly so it was brilliant um because I could see that they were actually engaged and very, um, very, very active. They wanted uh, to share some of the ideas. Okay, but we have to let them, uh, and this is this is the key here. So mm, they had some of the ideas. Uh, and by the way, do you know any of these sports? <clears throat> If you know from the course book, <laughs> don't tell other people. <gasps> like what what kibasen is. No, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for not Googling it because that's what students would do at that time, yeah? And you, do you know anything about that? And then smartphone and they quickly Google. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm very happy, but I'm sorry, I won't tell you. <laughs> you, have to, you have to get the book to know uh, the answers, or you have to simply Google it. But Kibasen is very, very funny. It's like the Japanese uh, sport is like, uh, okay, this one I can tell you. And this is, <laughs> uh, Kibasen is about people who create kind of a tower of themselves and they have to run through the field uh, and, and just push the other field uh, groups uh, out, uh, out of the, um, of the space and the winner is the only group which is uh, which remains uh, on 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 the uh, field probably yeah, i don't remember exactly what was the uh, the name here bed racing is fantastic yeah <laughs> okay so here is um the page um from the course book sports with a difference uh, so what we can do, like I, I showed you uh, on the slide before, you can uh, show your students the names of the sports and ask them to predict. Um, or you can do something else. Yes, using the toolbar on the left, like I showed you uh, before, uh, you can just show them the text, the whole text uh, from the course book. But because there are eight different sports, there is a lot of reading here. So what I do, I use the... <clears throat> 
teaching tools uh, option. You can see it uh, at the bottom of the slide. And there is the option hide. Okay, And you simply can hide uh, the space that you want your students, um, which you want to hide from, uh, from your students. So here, what I did, um, after they predicted and tried to predict uh, the, uh, actually what these sports are, I asked them to read the other texts, short texts like underwater cycling and so on. And then um, the second part of this activity was to use these short texts as models um, for telling me about the sports that they um, have been trying to predict uh, the, 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 the meaning of, okay? So it was a kind of a process, but it worked really, really nicely. It's a great option, yes? You know, you can hide whatever you want from, uh, from your students at any uh, moment. Uh, and uh, if you can, I hope you can see it, there is also the option invert, is it a presentation? Yes, it is a presentation tool uh, toolbar. Yes. Uh -huh. um, if you invert the height, um, the height option, as you can see, you, your students can only see this um, small part and they can't see the whole page. So this is also the way for interesting way to start a lesson, for example, where you show them just, I don't know, uh, like one piece of a picture or I don't know, one sentence or one quote and they can't see uh, anything, anything else. Uh, okay, why um, why do I talk about it so much? You know about this predicting, uh, allowing our students to have crazy ideas and to share their ideas. It's because you know good thinkers make good language learners. You know thinking is it, thinking occurs when we combine information in new ways, uh, and this is exactly what happens in learning a language. So being a good thinker and practicing thinking, yes, like here, guessing the bossa ball, boss ball, they were trying to analyze and, and find the connection. It helps them in learning, yes, because um, when we practice thinking with our students, we, uh, we practice also, you know, like finding, um, noticing patterns and, uh, you know, finding similarities and differences. It all really helps when we learn uh, a language. Okay, so now let's move on to cognition. Okay, how is the time? Not bad. <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is the part uh, in which I want to show you. Um, sorry, if you've already mentioned, is it a teacher presentation tool? You should... Yes, it is a pre teacher uh, presentation tool. Yes, 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 definitely. Mm -hmm. On Pearson English portal. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, analyzing the highest point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so let's move on to cognition. So mm, I talked about connection, about mm, the, the building the emotional bond with our students, uh, which accounts for whether they learn or not. So I hope you noticed that this is uh, this is for me what what for me is very important uh, in building this connection and being assumed a nice teach a nice person a good teacher is like respecting my students, respecting their ideas. Uh, but also making sure that whatever I do in my lesson um, kind of engages them from the very first minute of uh, our meeting, okay? So I expect a lot from them, um, but I'm also open to whatever they have to say. And I think this is uh, the, the key uh, element of um, building rapport with your, with your students. And here cognition is about organizing your uh, your lessons in a very coherent way so that students um, can really learn um, from from um, from the time that they spend with you that they can learn as much as possible of course they have to put some extra effort and some some uh, more work after the classes but what I do when, when I prepare my lessons I make sure that um, they remember as much as possible and they learn as much as possible during the lesson uh, Okay, so to plan my lessons, I use the ESAP methodology. I hope and I think, uh, I'm even sure <laughs> that uh, some of you, if not most, uh, are familiar uh, with this methodology. Uh, actually, if you are not uh, and you want to learn more, you can go to the Pearson website or you can go to YouTube, to Pearson English um, uh, channel and there you will find a whole series of uh, webinars uh, that uh, from from 
February, January or February, I don't remember, and that I had the pleasure to uh, to run with Michael Brandt and uh, Billy Jago. And in these webinars, we talked about the ESAP methodology and how to use it with different course books. Okay, so today I'm going to talk, I'm talking about gold experience, uh, but there are um, there, there there are a lot of webinars that you can uh, you can watch and uh, and also take some ideas from. Uh, from them. Uh, so what is this um, ESAP methodology? It's the idea of when you plan your lesson of breaking your lesson down into four stages. Yes, yeah? So you don't have to write a very detailed plan. You just have to think about the way you organize your lesson uh, to make sure that your students actually really have a chance to learn something, to re revise something, to learn something new, and they have a chance to practice it so that they uh, remember better. So the first part, uh, when you plan your lesson, uh, you have to think about the first part of the lesson in which I want my students, I want to engage my students, okay? So this is the part, sometimes it's called, um, sometimes it's called, um, you know, this is the part that when we, we talk about warm-ups, yes? Um, I like to call it an appetizer. <laughs> it's just a term I coined myself, uh, and I'm very proud of it. Uh, an appetizer because you know I want to whet my students' appetite, appetite for more. Yes, I want them to see that okay, what's going to happen next is going to be fascinating. Uh, <clears throat> okay, um, je, uh, your <laughs> thank you. Oh my goodness, such nice words. Okay, motivation is coming. Yes, okay, I'm I'm you know full of beans. I am a very energetic person but person privately I am quite different <laughs> it's just you know my uh, teaching persona uh, okay uh, engage stage um, so like I said an appetizer uh, so I make sure um, when I plan this uh, part of the lesson I usually choose uh, an activity or two in which I want my students to um to to go into the lesson like you know and to be be engaged from the very first minute and to be ready for for what is happening for, for what is going to happen next so of course i i start with the retrieval practice and uh, some kind of an activity in which students have to retrieve uh, their knowledge um, this is because uh, I kind of a revision, like the golden minute activity I, I, I presented, okay? Um, because I want to show them that they are ready for what is going to happen next. Besides, uh, when we want our students to learn something new, we usually make sure that uh, they have something in their memories, in their brains, to connect it with, yes, to, to, to find the connection. So this is easier for them to, to remember. That's why retrieving uh, pieces of information, re retrieving some vocabulary or some structures is very important at this part of the lesson. So I usually plan something like that. And uh, what we can do here, like we can reuse or recycle some of the activities uh, from previous lessons, okay? We don't have to, you know, create millions of, of tasks and we don't have to be, you know, the crazy creative. Yeah, like, God, have mercy, okay? We also need some time to, to relax. So I think it's a good idea to reuse and recycle some of the things uh, we did before, but maybe in a different, um, in a different uh, way, for example, okay? Uh, share a few warm-up activities. Actually, I don't have time today, but like I said, if you go to Pearson English YouTube channel, you will find a lot of ideas uh, that I shared in my presentations there, okay? So go there and write um, ESAP Magda Kanya <laughs> and you will find uh, the recordings, okay? You can just go quickly through them and just note down the, uh, the activities. There are some, some nice things uh, for you. Uh, okay, so um, for um, for this part, when I when I uh, when I plan my lesson, I I use quite often I use the things that the book gives me. Okay, so of course I have a lot of ideas, um, my private, my personal ideas, but also ideas collected from different uh, webinars or workshops or conferences. And I have this box, you know, special box on which I actually in which I collect them and I just uh, write the the titles uh, and I simply remember them when I use them so it's a good idea to have a box 
Now I call it the box of randomness because there are random ideas. Uh, but you can also use the resources. As you can see, you have everything here. You have a lot of photocopyable activities. Um, you have the audio, the video, everything. Okay, so feel free and and just browse through that and see how many how many things you can get from that. Uh, what is good about and um, proper planning of this part is that you make sure that your students are engaged uh, and they have, um, participate actively from the very first minute. Um, and what I try to do is like I collect ideas for retrieval practice. OK, so I have a set of ideas that I use uh, with my students um to to recall uh, the material okay so that they have different different uh, we we do it in a different way okay and i make sure that they have multiple opportunities to uh, to do that okay uh do, 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 so, so, so. just give me a second what happened okay so the next part of the lesson that i uh, need to plan is the study okay time is running go and the, for this part of the lesson, this is the part of the lesson in which we uh, have to think about the controlled practice. This is the, the part of the lesson in which students learn, actually learn something new. OK, so here we have to make sure that we choose the uh, activities uh, in which um, the language will be presented. So this is the, the reading, the vocabulary practice. OK, so everything in your uh, in your course book um, that is around studying and um, acquiring uh, new new pieces of information, new knowledge. So make sure that there is a lot of target language at that stage uh, of the lesson. Um, but also what is incredibly important for me here is to give students time, time to think, uh, time to practice, uh, time to, um, to analyze uh, what, what they are learning. OK, so I don't know if you know, but we as teachers, when we ask a question, we give our students one second to answer, which is absolutely, you know, absurd. Uh, because when I asked you a question, of course you needed some time to, 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 uh, to think and to write something, yes? It wasn't just you know, in one second. So give them time to think. And TTT, which stands for teacher talking time, uh, I try to limit it, but it's not that I just sit quietly and my students do all the work, because of course um, um, we have to model the language, we have to give them explanations, we have to clarify certain things. But in a way, I limit uh, my uh, teacher talking time at that stage of the lesson. And there is one uh, thing that we need to remember <clears throat> that um, to develop mental facility is to repeat the target process, okay, again, again, and again. So we need practice, 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 okay. So uh, also in this fantastic book, Willingham mentions uh, drilling, and he says there is nothing wrong in drilling if it's done in a uh, in a creative and uh, interesting way, okay? So because uh, drilling and practice uh, allows our students to, um, to remember better and uh, to make um, the structures, the words um, stored in their long-term memory, okay? So um, they can retrieve it automatically. They don't need to spend a lot of time uh, thinking about it, yeah? So practice and practice. Uh, there is one thing that is uh, worth mentioning at this stage when you plan the study lesson is the grammar presentations, uh, which are available uh, on Pearson English portal. And there you will find the grammar presentations uh, for each unit, uh, each grammar aspect of each uh, unit of the course book. This is brilliant. You can download them uh, and um, you can share it with your students if you want to, uh, or you can use it in the classroom. Yes, in these presentations, um, you have the uh, description of the form and the function. There are also some exercises, some activities in which you can uh, check whether your students um, actually understand and are able to use uh, the structure which you're trying to practice uh, with them. It's absolutely brilliant. And for me, especially because, you know, <laughs> uh, using the board and drawing these unusual diagrams was sometimes exhausting and my students you know made fun of me that I shouldn't draw uh, so using the uh, the grammar presentations uh, is absolutely brilliant and actually once you go through them you will see that 
uh, you can also, because they are, um, you have access to them only with certain course books. But if you work with gold experience, you have access. And then once you download them, you can also use the presentations um, if you work with other Pearson course books, yes, that don't give you access to them. So I think it's uh, it's worth uh, checking and having a look at. Um, what's, what's great about proper planning of the study um, part of the lessons uh, is that you <clears throat> make sure that the students engage in, in with lesson content in multiple ways. Yes, yeah? so remember, do not follow the course book religiously. Yes, yeah? like make sure that your students sometimes have to exchange the idea. Sometimes, sometimes they have to. Um, um, um answer the questions sometimes they have to fill uh, fill in the sentences like the good course book will will give you that and of course gold experience uh, is one of them uh, and what is uh, what is also important is the constant mental stimulation yes remember that the uh, when you plan this uh, stage of the lesson remember about the goldilocks principle like the tasks shouldn't be too difficult or too easy when they are too easy, students get bored. If they are too difficult, students get discouraged. So try to make sure that whatever you have um, prepared for your students is just um, on the proper level, okay? So that they are constantly um, stimulated uh, mentally. Okay, then we have to uh, plan the activate uh, part of the lesson. So this is the, the part of the lesson in which students have to practice more freely. Uh, so there's a lot of interaction. And when I plan this lesson, I usually uh, plan some um, activities like, you know, um, communicative activities in which students have to do something in pairs or in groups or have to share something with the others. So this is also a great opportunity to tap into students' interests. Yes, like that's why um, the first part, connection, getting to know your students is also important here uh, on, a, on a linguistic level. Level, yes, because you know uh, what your students' interests are and you can, in a way, use it. Uh, and this is also um, the moment of the lesson in which we can identify mistakes and we can give our students instant feedback. Yes, yeah? like help them uh, correct the mistakes and work on them uh, later. The benefits is like this part of the lesson, the students are uh, usually exhausted, <laughs> um, but they are in incredibly engaged uh, because this is something that this is the, the part of the lesson in which they actually uh, kind of personalize the uh, the content of the lesson yes like they have to do something um uh, with it it's not just filling in the exercises but also um, adding a piece of themselves to to the tasks uh, and um, well we have we can have a lot of different interactive activities here uh, because as we teachers you know we are known for having you know a bunch of ideas uh, to use from and with the course book and with the resources uh, available on uh, Pearson English portal you have also uh, some extra help and the last part when I plan my lesson is the practice part of the homework basically uh, but my students don't like the word home the word word uh, homework so I usually say independent practice uh, and so here I uh, we of course we can use um, the online practice my English lab in which we just um, assign different tasks to uh, to our students you have access to um, my English lab from Pearson English portal as well okay you need the uh, the access you need the code uh, to have access to that but this is absolutely fantastic because you you know, uh, here, um, we as teachers, we don't have to spend a lot of time uh, checking homework because the system does it for uh, for us, okay? We can see whether the objectives of the lesson have been um, achieved, uh, but actually we don't do it. The system, the online practice system does it for us. The students uh, get the grades automatically. And what is even better, they get instant feedback. So they can see what's the problem and what they should work uh, more on. <clears throat> And so it also gives us a lot of students, for our students, opportunities to, to practice and to see what they uh, need to um, work on more. Uh, and for us, it gives us, it's an opportunity to see what we can do next time uh, to make sure that our students um, succeed.
Okay, so uh, okay, the, the benefits of um, online practice is that uh, we can uh, we we make sure that our students uh, can um, kind of develop like foster self learning skills. Yes, they can learn how to learn individually. They feel responsible. Uh, it's not that um, only the part on the lesson is important. Like. Um, you know, the, the, the teacher tells me to do this, so I will do this, okay? So they are independent, more independent. They, they feel that they have to uh, work on their own and they want to learn on their own. And online practice gives them this opportunity. And it's much more pleasurable than, you know, filling in the exercises in the paper uh, workbook. Uh, and what is, uh, what is even better, uh, here is like by by the fact that students get instant feedback in online uh, practice, they can focus on the learning. Yes, not on not just on the grades because it's not you know about the grades. It's uh, it's um, it's about the learning. So they can see uh, immediately, instantly. Um, what uh, what what's the problem and they what um, what they need to sorry I got <laughs> uh, I see that you're writing something in the chat box um, learning process not grading not getting great okay they can see uh, what's the problematic area uh, and what they need to uh, work on more uh, okay so you know some some people say uh, that you are either born a good teacher or not. Yeah, there is this saying in, in, in Polish, um, in, in, in our language, like, yes, are you are either you're born a good teacher or not. Actually, I don't agree. And I'm very happy that Daniel Willingham uh, <laughs> doesn't either, because he said that teaching, like any complex cognitive skill, must be practiced to be improved. Uh, so I'm very happy that there are so many of you here today. Uh, I hope you managed to gather some ideas for uh, the coming year uh, and uh, I hope <laughs> that you all feel uh, from what I said you all feel that you are good teachers uh, too okay uh, so thank you very much for being here thank you for for um, for being so active in the chat box and thank you for answering my questions uh, enjoy the rest of the sessions there are a lot of sessions tomorrow and on Friday uh, if you have time on Friday, you can join me at 10.20, I guess. I have another session about teaching uh, teenagers. Thank you very much.